You may be seated. I want you to bear with me tonight. Um, These services are extremely hard to do. I didn't really want to do it. I did it in passing. I mentioned it to Pastor Ron, and he kind of picked up on it, and I was like, man, he caught me. Man. But I just want you to bear with me tonight. Tonight's going to be a... A different service um, so just be patient with me the history of Memorial Day the early origins of Memorial Day came uh, on May 5th 1866 it was founded in Waterloo New York the original day for Memorial Day was decoration day I don't know if many people knew that but it wasn't called Memorial Day it was decoration day because General John Logan called for a day of remembrance to be held on May 30th, 1868. For, for, for the purpose was for people to go place flowers on the graves of those that have given their life for their country. To decorate the graves of, of those men and those women that had, that had given the ultimate sacrifice. You see, Memorial Day became a federal holiday in 1968 when Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act which basically gives everybody a three-day weekend. Amen to that. Yes, I'm off Monday. Well, I'm off Monday anyhow. (laughs) But Congress passed that act, and that's that's how Memorial Day came about. Now, most of us, let's be honest with ourselves, most of us know Memorial Day as the pool's opening. Yeah. People getting together for good barbecue. Amen. Tremendous shopping deals. And I was one of those people. I loved Memorial Day, man. I'd go to my family's house. We'd have cookouts. We'd go shopping. We'd do all this stuff. But we never did really remember what it was for. And that's until my time and my service in the United States Army. See, tonight I want to show you a more solemn side of what Memorial Day is and and what it should mean to us. It's, it's not just a holiday. It's not just a day off. You see, when you think about Memorial Day and the sacrifice that's been made, the first thing you have to do is you have to look at the oath of enlistment that our service men and women, each and every one of them take before they join their, their branch of service. You see, everyone, see, what a lot of people don't know is you just don't go and you sign paper. Man, you have to say an oath. An oath is like a promise. It's like like a contract between you and the federal government. And this is what it says. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. And immediately, that husband, that daughter, that wife, son, brother, and sister knows that there may be a time that comes when they have to lay down their life for their country. You see, what I call this, I, I, I th- it's a great honor to have served. And it's, you know, you know for those veterans that are, that are in the house, it, it's a brotherhood, man. A lot of people don't understand. There's, only, there's probably less than 2% of everyone in, the na- in, in our nation that can say that we belong to this brotherhood. It's an amazing thing. But we all knew when that oath of enlistment was over that our lives were on the line. Our friends' lives were on the line. Our buddies' lives were on the line. See, George Orwell said, it had a famous quote. And Mauricio, if you want to start the first PowerPoint. It says, people sleep peaceably in their beds at night only because rough men and women stand ready to do violence on their behalf. 
You see, what you see behind me tonight are faces of brave men and women that have sacrificed their all. This is a seven minute PowerPoint slide and it's only 120 people. They could go on and on and on. When you look at these slides, the one thing I notice is that it doesn't matter what race, creed, color, doesn't matter if you're male, female, young or old, those that served and those that took that oath knew that one day may come. One day may come where they would become the true hero. You see, a hero isn't the person that serves. A hero is the person that served and never made it back. You see, these are family members. These are lives that were cut short. These are the true heroes that we celebrate on Memorial Day. This is someone's son and someone's daughter. But you see, everything that we've received in life, there was a price that's been attached to it. Everything that we've received, and, and I'm, I'm always telling my son this, and I'm always telling people, you know, you, you, you gotta work for the things that you want. You gotta, you gotta work for the things that you need, and there's always a price that has to be paid. That's in our physical life, but it's also, when, when we speak about our spiritual life too, there was a price that had to be paid. You see, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Isaiah 53, five and six says, but he was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, just as in the physical world, there's price to be paid for, for the things that we receive, the freedoms that we have, the things that we, that we own, but also in the spiritual world, Christ paid a price for our freedom. He had to do it. Only he could have paid that price. You see, he paid that price for our salvation. Aren't you glad that we have salvation tonight? He paid that price so that we could have the promise of eternal life. He paid that price so we could enjoy spiritual freedom and we could, we could see the chains broken in our lives and the bondages and the shackles just taken away. He paid that price for us. You see, freedom comes at a steep, steep cost. We don't always think about it. We take it for granted a lot of times. I know I take, for, take it for granted. I'll be honest with you tonight. I take for granted the fact that I can walk into a grocery store freely without any guns pointing at me. I take it for granted sometimes that I can walk into a New York City public school and have church. I take it for granted that we could be here tonight worshiping God. And the only reason why we're able to do that is because of the price that Christ paid. It's the only reason why we have the freedoms that we have. You see, there was a heavy price that had to be paid. There had to be a sacrifice and there had to be bloodshed. Just like as in any war, there, there's always bloodshed. And, and in our spiritual life, there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be bloodshed, but it's only Jesus' Christ's blood that was needed. It stopped with him. You see, in our physical life, these brave men and women that you see behind me, they didn't pass away in vain. You see, we enjoy the freedoms that they paid for. The United States of America is the greatest country on earth because of the freedoms that we have. If you think about the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment gives us the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the freedom to assemble peaceably. 
That's just one. The Second Amendment, the right and freedom for people to bear arms. The Fourth Amendment, the right to be secure in their person's houses, papers or effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. The Sixth Amendment, the, the right to a speedy and fair trial. We have so many freedoms that we enjoy as American citizens, but we take them for granted. And we forget sometimes the price and the cost that it took for us to enjoy these. I'll be honest with you tonight. I served. I had friends that died. And even I forget sometimes. Even I forget. But every May comes back around. Or September 29th. It comes back around. That's when I'll remember. You see, there's many more freedoms and rights that, that we as Americans enjoy. But, but this was just to highlight a few that makes this country great and worth fighting for and in some cases worth dying for. See, the price that's been paid can be related physically and spiritually. And just as Jesus secured our eternal freedom through his death and resurrection, our physical freedom has been secured through the death of, our, of this country's sons and daughters. It's staggering when you look at the statistics. I'm going to read them all for you tonight. The Revolutionary War estimated 25,000 dead. The War of 1812, 6,765 dead. The Civil War, 625,000 dead. On the north, 365,000. The south was 260,000. World War I, 116,516 soldiers dead. World War II, 405,399. The Korean War, 36,574. The Vietnam War, 58,220. Desert Storm and Desert Shield, 383 soldiers passed away. The, all the Iraq operations, 4,545. All the Afghanistan operations, 2,394 for a total combined death, loss of 1,200,000. 80,796. And that's just the major operations. There's many more. See, over 1.2 million people have paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country that we live in. And, and 1.2 million people have said, it doesn't matter if you like me. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with what we're fighting for. It doesn't matter that you'll probably forget about at times how heavy the cost is. It doesn't matter if you don't want to go and fight. We will. And they have. 1.2 million people have passed away for our freedom. See, the United States Service Men and Women has basically given the United States government a signed blank check that could be payable with their life. When you take that oath of enlistment, that's one of the, the things that, that you're automatically told. You are writing a blank check and they can cash it at any time. 1.2 million people, their checks were cashed. 1.2 million. That's why we celebrate Memorial Day. That's why we honor those that have paid the price. But if you look in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, we see the scripture says, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You see, Jesus Christ signed a blank check, knowing, knowing that his heavenly father was gonna cash it. He signed a blank check for Pastor Richie Cruz in the memo box. Eric Webb in the memo box. Beth Webb in the memo box. 
He signed that check and he says, I'll do it for you. I'll pay that price just for you. Just for you, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the cross. Just for you, I'll take the beatings. Just for you, I'll take the persecution. Just for you, I'll do it. You may not be here tonight and you may not even say that you're a Christian, but you know what? He did it just for you. He signed a check and he put your name in the memo box and he says, I'll pay the price for your freedom. I'll pay the price. See, he knew that we couldn't pay the price that was necessary to be paid. There's no way that we could have ever paid the price. It, it had to be a perfect sacrifice. It was a one-time sacrifice. And he wrote the check. And he said, here you go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to purchase your freedom. You see, the price of freedom is currently and continually being paid. There's operations, on, are, they're ongoing all across this world. Just because it's uh, not on the nightly news doesn't mean that things aren't happening. Just because we don't hear about it on Fox or CNN or, or that it's, they don't make a big deal about it doesn't mean that there's still not men and women on the front lines that are fighting for our freedom. You see, what we need to do tonight is we need to begin to pray for these soldiers. We need to pray for their protection. We need to pray for, for, for safe travels. We need to pray that, that, that their minds, they'll come home and their minds will be right. Because there's still operations going. You see, there's always a cost. There's always something that has to be done to ensure that we remain the greatest country on this earth. There's many chances to honor our service, men and women. You have July 4th, which is right around the corner. You got Veterans Day in November, and all those are nice. But Memorial Day isn't for the veteran. I'm sorry to say that. It's not. It's not. Memorial Day is for those that have passed away. I challenge you tonight that on Monday at 3 p.m., according to the order signed by President Clinton, when he called the, the, the National Moment of Remembrance, at 3 p.m., can you just say a quick prayer? Can you just stop what you're doing? I, know, I don't know where you may be. I don't know what you might be doing, but just can you take a moment and remember and pray for the families that have lost a loved one? Pray for the fatherless and motherless children. Pray for the widowed wives and husbands. Pray for the families that have lost sons and daughters. It's just one moment. I don't think that's too hard of a challenge. Just as we honor and remember those that have paid the price for our physical freedom, we also need to remember and honor the one who paid the price for our spiritual freedom, that's Jesus Christ in Deuteronomy 6 5 it says you shall love the lord your god with all your heart soul and might if we're going to honor god that's a good place to start psalms 1 i was talking to grace uh, earlier and i'm going to be doing this in the men's breakfast tomorrow but psalms 1 1 and 2 it says blessed is the, is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seats, seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law, he meditates day and night. See, we honor God through our love for him. We honor God through living our lives according to the word. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that God gave me a book that I can go to and it's an instruction manual. Lord only knows I needed it. And my wife will say amen to that. We honor God through loving and serving others. We honor God through serving him no matter the cost you see i can tell you story after story after story of times when i was in iraq and i never really wanted to go outside that gate i didn't it wasn't it just was a feeling and you get that feeling and and 
You get that little knot in your stomach. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to go do this. I don't, I don't feel right about this. But I signed a blank check. And my friends signed a blank check. And my buddies signed a blank check that said, no matter the cost, we'll go fight for others' freedoms. Some came back, some didn't. And it's important to honor those that has paid the way, paved the way for our physical freedom. It's even, an important, it's even more important to honor God because he sent his son to make a, a way for us. We sang it tonight, he made a way. He made a way. He made a way. I didn't deserve it, but he made it. I didn't deserve the spiritual freedom that he's offering, but I, I, he did it for me. There's a poem I want to read to you tonight. It's by C.W. Johnson, and it's called a Memorial Day poem. And we're almost done. Like I said, tonight's a real quick service, but it says, We walked among the crosses where our fallen soldiers lay and listened to the bugle as taps began to play. The chaplain led a prayer. We stood with heads bowed low and I thought of fallen comrades I'd known so long ago. They came from every city across this fertile land that we might live in freedom. They lie here beneath the sand. I felt a little guilty. My sacrifice was small. I only lost a little time, but these men lost their all. Now the services are over for this Memorial Day. To the names upon these crosses, I just want to say, thanks for what you've given. No one could ask for more. May you rest with God in heaven from now through evermore. Mauricio, if you want to dim these lights and play the video for us.
remain standing. Mauricio, if you want to cue the final PowerPoint and taps. And after taps is played, if you want to come up and just close us out, because we'll, we'll be done after that. Are we ready? There's one particular particular f phrase from the poem that Pastor Eric read that touched me. It said they came from across every city from this wonderful great country of ours, this land. And truly, as Pastor Eric said, Memorial Day is not about the veterans. But I just need to remind everyone this evening especially the young folks that are here, you know, heroes don't wear capes. Heroes are real people just like you and I have the same feelings that we have, go through the same struggles that we have. But they took an oath, as Pastor Eric read. They took an oath willing and knowing that someday they may have to make the greatest sacrifice ever of laying their, lay their lives down so we can enjoy the freedoms of this great country. And we thank God for those that were willing to do it. So although this is not about the veterans, please can everyone uh, sit down, except, except for those veterans that are in the house. Please remain standing. And saints, what you're looking at, those are heroes. Now you can stand and continue, continue to, to give them the honor due to them. I personally want to thank Pastor Eric for the bravery displayed this evening. Somebody say amen. amen. It wasn't easy for him to stand up here and just open his heart as he did. John chapter 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Pastor Eric couldn't have said it better. It becomes a brotherhood, it becomes family. And those that he, he locked arms with, they came from every city across this great land, from different backgrounds, different cultures, and different races, different ethnic backgrounds as well, and they became one. And likewise, just look around the room today, because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Bible says one day, Every nation and every tongue shall be glorifying the name of Jesus up in heaven.